Hey, this is Brooke Jolly. I'm doing this. This is just a simple video showing how to do a campaign for a single agent and adding a list to that campaign so that you would be able to load leads into a list and dial using VichyDial. Uh, first, we're going to go into the administration area. See here, we've got a section called Campaigns on the left. Take the campaign section. Uh, you're going to want to go up here to the top where it says Add a New Campaign. First, we're just going to add this one, uh, Test Campaign. Uh, name it test campaign campaign description test campaign obviously um, make sure it's set to active um, the web form if you're not using the web form don't worry about it minimum hopper level normally you're going to want to set that to 10 I uh, wouldn't suggest setting it high what happens is if the box does happen to malfunction and you've got it set to a thousand it's going to mark a thousand records as if they had been called so it's not necessarily a good thing to set that thing high the hopper resets itself once a minute so with a hopper level set to 10 and a dial timeout of around 20 seconds 10 is enough for you to make 3 to 1 predictive dialing uh, and call for a full minute which is the amount of time it takes it to reset if you're going to be calling in a higher ratio than 3 to 1 then you can set it up to 20 uh, I personally I wouldn't suggest a single agent on a box ever be dialing in higher than a 4 to 1 ratio unless they have some sort of mathematical algorithm doing uh, statistical analysis on the leads in question that they are dialing. Now here the auto dial level normally like your basic dialer where somebody's dialing cold call data normally they dial 3 to 1 ratios so we'll just go ahead and set it there. Since this is a single agent campaign this next agent call status doesn't really matter. Um, however where you're sitting in with a group where multiple people are working in a campaign, I like to set it to longest wait time. We're going to set it here to 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., which what that does is sets what area code or what the time zone check is going to be. Legal times to call in most zip codes are 9 in the morning until 9 p.m. Some states it's 8 to 9. Uh, some states have funny laws about the days that in which you can't make cold calls or when you can't make sales calls even to leads there there's some really 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 funny rules on the books um, a good rule of thumb I normally am only dialing in my systems uh, people that have opted in so that, that have requested contact but if you're making cold calls it's a very good idea to brush up on all the state laws for that so that you're not calling on a day when it's illegal because the fines for that can be extremely high um, and on the get call launch I like to set it to script because a lot of times I'll mix my data from two or three sources so I need to know whether or not the person that I'm calling I don't write a whole script what I like to put in the script is whether or not it's a lead whether it's a cold call um, and just an opening line so that it's not so um, I guess a good explanation would be when you're first learning to use a dialer it's very shocking almost because you'll hear a noise and then you have to right then come up with what you're gonna say if you have an opening sentence prepared that is prepared specifically for the type of data that you're going to be calling then it allows the agent that when they hear the noise to be able to read what's on the screen but since what they're reading is only that one sentence and all that it's there for is to kind of pull them into the conversation so to speak it kind of covers up the fact that they're reading a little bit um, just the nature of using a dialer in general it, it's helpful to have a short introductory sentence as a script um, for right now I'm just going to set that to none so now you've got a lot more settings come up when you hit the submit button um, if you go down the list right here now it's only set to dialing new leads so of course you're going to want to add in the things that you wanted to dial which would be things like answering machines the automatically status answering machines busy signals etc etc you can see there's lots of settings uh, the things you don't want to do is have it call things that are on your do not call list. You don't want it to call um, not interested. You don't want it to call back people that obviously weren't supposed to be called. But you do want to make it so that it can call back calls that were dropped inadvertently the first time around. Agent errors. Um, don't ever set it to call in call. That means the lead is currently in being dialed. So you, you obviously don't want that. Um, but that's go through there get the ones that you wanted to do now here we've got list order I personally prefer down count you can always click these little question marks and get the full rundown of what the different options do 
down count calls from the leads in this campaign that have been dialed the least number of times to the leads that have been dialed the most number of times. It is good for making sure that the data that has been attempted the least number of times gets called the most. Um, past that, the other settings do lots of different things. You can go and dig through the help files and learn all kinds of things there if you'd like to. Um, I normally set down count, lead ascend, let's see, keep going down the list here, we've got a minimum hopper level set correctly, hopper multiplier set to one. Now this is a single agent campaign, um, but if you're in a multi-user campaign, what this is, is, it multiplies the number of users that are online at the time times this number, or times this number and then makes the determination of how many leads to load in the hopper per the number of agents that are available. Uh, but since we're doing this is just a single user setup so you're going to want to set into ratio auto dial level of three. Now drop percentage level limit. The legal drop percentage is three percent. Set it to three percent or lower. You do not want to call and drop people over and over. It is against the law and is a bad thing in general. Um, make sure the next thing to set here is where is it at? Available only tally set to yes. It's an important setting. If the available only tally is not set, then what will happen is it will dial people when no one is available, and you do not want it to do that because you can have the dialer sitting there dialing and dialing and dialing while the agent's in a phone call and can't answer. That is a bad thing you don't want that to happen. Um, now I'll go down the list a little farther. Make sure you set the campaign color ID to the color ID the person's going to be using. Routing extensions and stuff you can leave alone. Script, I actually like to set my scripts in my list, but you can pick a script if you already have one made or you can set it to none or just unpicked. AMD send to voicemail extension is something where if it detects an answer machine it automatically will send them to the voicemail extension. However, I'm not going to enable AMD in this campaign because on a smaller box I don't like to use it and I do not like to use AMD ever on the first and second phone calls because AMD in its very 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 best configuration is not 100% accurate. So it's not a great idea to use. Period. It's only, in my eyes, AMD is something that I like using when I've already attempted to call a number more than two times. That way I do know the person didn't answer the first time, they didn't answer the second time. So when I'm calling the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth time, if they do happen to accidentally get hung up on because the machine believes that they're an answer machine, at least I tried them twice and I didn't. I mean, I wasn't I absolutely was intending to get a hold of them the first time. Uh, but in a system like this in a 3 to 1 ratio, I'd don't want to overload a Pentium 4, which is what this box is. Go on down. We want to allow no hopper leads logins. What that means is there are no leads available for a person to dial. They will still be able to log into the box. Um, we want to display the number of leads available to dial. That way we don't have an agent sitting there with zero. So they do actually know that they are able to dial. Here you've got agent pause after each call. Um, this one is important if you are using telemarketers. Reason being, if you are using telemarketers that are not in your office that are remote, you can set this to yes so that they will not be able to turn the box on, log in, hit resume, and walk away from it, and then leave it dialing itself uh, just to infinity. Um, you don't want that to happen. What this does is causes them to have to resume after each call, and it, that would cause the mouse will actually have to be moved in order for that to happen. Um, it's not gonna it's not gonna be possible otherwise for them to to do that. Now farther down, there's a agent screen clipboard copy. It's that's up to your preference whether or not you want them to be able to do that. Um, let's see. These VTiger settings are if you're using a VTiger integration. The VTiger integration is kind of broken right now, so um, you're not necessarily going to want to be using that unless you are going to go in and fix the broken parts. But that's that's got the entire, that's pretty well got this finished, so we're going to hit submit. Now we have a campaign saved. Now uh, go over here to lists, click lists. Now that I'm in the lists area, we're going to go to add a new list. Call this list 2001 list name is going to be test list 
list description, test list, and we're going to put it in the campaign I just created, which is test campaign. Set to active, hit submit. Now, if you are dialing aged leads or dialing uh, cold call data, you're going to want to set a reset time unless you want to log into the administration area every time and manually reset. What I like to do is set a reset time, you can see it's already selected because I already did it once, to 1200, 2400. Or actually it should be 1200 and then all zeros I think actually. 2400 is not a real time, it never reaches it. Uh, what this will do is cause this list to reset at midnight and noon every day uh, so that it can be dialed again as long as the status meets one of the criteria in the campaign that is available to dial, which I know is kind of a confusing way to say it, but that's the reality of it. Now, I like to set, like I said before, my script that I'm going to use as the script for what it is. So we're just going to, let's assume that this is for aged leads, we're just going to set it to aged and say that that's what the, what the script is going to be for this campaign, or for this list inside the campaign. If you, each of your lists are a different thing, you could have list in there. Um, a good example would be, say you sold um, health insurance and life insurance. I'll say that because I sell insurance, so I kind of understand that. Um, you might want to have a different script for health insurance than you have for life insurance, but allow a campaign to mix both together. Then when the call pops up on screen, it would tell you what that person, why you were calling them. Um, you could set a caller ID specifically for the list so that when you get a call back, you can have a specific DID set up so that you know why that person was calling you. Um, let's see, now they've got a way that you can, if you drop a call, it can be transferred to an inbound group rather than just dropped. Um, but this is for a single user campaign, so it's not something you have to worry about. And then hit submit, and you're done. Now you have a list inside of a campaign, and in order to load leads, you would go into the load new leads area. Uh, it's kind of off-centered, a little off-kilter, let me fix that. Here you would pick any um, list that you have available in the computer that you can load, assign it to the list it's supposed to go into, always assign it phone code override one USA unless you're not in the United States obviously uh, but if you do not do that then you can end up with um, a list loaded into the system that thinks it's in the wrong time zone and won't call um, or will just sit there it won't do anything I've, I've had that happen on accident before unless you've already formatted your CSV files you're gonna want to choose custom layout I usually check for duplicates in the list or in the campaign for single users not in the entire system um, this check for valid prefix and area code will make sure that the numbers that you are loading are not fake which is a good thing um, and then we've got the time zone lookup by I like to set it to run by postal code first once you've got a file loaded in there and hit submit down here at the bottom it will load in and let you pick each of the fields um, to where they're supposed to be assigned in the dialer when you hit the button, it'll throw them right into that list, and from there, you'll be able to load in to log in as the agent and start dialing. Uh, but that's that's it. That's how you start and make a new campaign, a new list for a single agent use, and then load your first set of leads into it.